All right, just another top-notch modifier instruction video for you here today. Today we're dealing with two things, misplaced and dangling modifiers. Okay, so the idea here is modifiers should be placed right next to the thing that they are modifying to avoid confusion. So a misplaced modifier modifies the wrong word, or it seems to modify more than one word in the sentence. And to correct that, you got to move the modifier as close as you possibly can to the word that it modifies. Here in front of you, I've got a couple examples. Here's one where it's misplaced, and I've got it in bold so you can see real easily. I want to buy a computer for my mother with a modem. All right, it shouldn't go there because your mother's not the one with the modem, unless she's some sort of robotic mother. A clearer sentence would be, I want to buy a computer with a modem for my mother. With a modem is modifying computer, and so it should be as close to that as it possibly can. Another example here says, at the picnic, we serve strawberry mousse to everyone in paper cups. Well, you can already see how silly that sounds. Everyone should not be in paper cups. What should be in the paper cups? Clearly the strawberry mousse. And so a clearer sentence is, at the picnic, we serve strawberry mousse in paper cups to everyone. So those are when they're misplaced. In other words, the modifier's there. The thing it modifies is there. They're just separate. They're not where they should be. You got to get them closer together. A dangling modifier, on the other hand, it doesn't logically modify any word in the sentence. And so to correct a dangling modifier, you either have to supply the word that is dangling there so it can logically modify it. So here's a couple examples again for you of that. Here's a dangling modifier. Waiting for a ride home, rain started to fall. Now I know a little common sense, you probably are thinking it's a person, but here the word rain comes right after it and the rain is not waiting for a ride home, all right? So to clear it up, you would say, while I was waiting for a ride home, rain started to fall. Here's another example. Having found the missing boy, the search was called off. Again, this might at first seem like that's totally a fine sentence. What's the problem? But we have the modifier having found the missing boy, and we don't know who called the search off or who found the missing boy. So we say, having found the missing boy, Officer Hadley called off the search. That makes better sense. So how's this exercise going to work? Pretty simple. You're going to be given two sentences, and all you have to do is choose which sentence has the modifier in bold used correctly. So an example here is which sentence has the bolded modifier in the correct place? I serve pizza to the children on paper plates, or I serve pizza on paper plates to the children. I think you know the answer, especially since I put the X there and you can clearly see it. The children are not on paper plates. It is the pizza that is on paper plates. So I'll just show you the first one here, and let's see if we can figure this all out. Which sentence is correct? Before leaving on Friday, hors d'oeuvres will be available for the workshop apartments. Workshop apartments? Yikes. Workshop participants? Clearly not. Hors d'oeuvres are not going to be leaving on Friday. Hors d'oeuvres are little food things that people eat when they're being fancy. Hors d'oeuvres will be available for the workshop participants before leaving on Friday. Yeah, it's the participants who will be leaving on Friday. And so you're going to want to click the little button for the second sentence here, and that's how you'll get it correct. All right, so just do that for the remaining sentences. Again, do it as many times as you like, and we'll be back next week with our last modifier lesson. How do you use the word 